And the Canadian flick Ginger Snaps was released to great acclaim. Uh, it put a fresh spin on the whole horror film genre, breaking that stereotypical type of, type of horror film. And it quickly developed a worldwide cult, cult following. Now, not one, but two follow-up pictures are happening, a prequel and a sequel. The uh, sequel is called Ginger Snaps Unleashed. The star of it is Emily Perkins. She's here. Before we chat with her, let's take a look at Ginger Snaps Unleashed. Don't you just love the sound of nature? This ends now. You can't fight what's in us, B. I'm not like you, Ginger. I'm stronger. Oh, really? But that's not how I remember you the first 15 years of your life. It's how I remember the last 15 minutes of yours. Okay, this Vancouver-born actress... This Vancouver-born actress has a history of taking roles in spooky projects. She's best known for her role as Bev in the Stephen King min miniseries It and, of course, Bridget in Ginger Snaps. Please welcome the enchanting Emily Perkins. Yeah! Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Glad to be here. Well, it's great to have you here. You're, a, you're a quite Thanks. a cult hero. Thank you. Now, what is it, uh, what, what is it that makes uh, Ginger Snaps gives it such a cult following? Well, I think it's because it's a character-driven horror film, and it's not condescending for teens. It's, a, it's kind of a straight horror film, um, but it, and it's not self-consciously ironic like the Scream movies, and I think we're all kind of sick of that stuff. So it's, it's really refreshing. It's, got, it's really smart. It it's kinda, has a sardonic sense of humor, and it has a, a socially critical side. So, so yeah, give, me an, give me one example of how this, in case somebody hasn't seen it out there, because you're, you're, you're right. I mean, it's profoundly different from that mm -hmm. sort of cheap uh, Hollywood stereotypical horror film. Give us an example of, of, of that. Well, it has, it definitely has a, a feminist consciousness to it. And I mean, the character of Bridget, she's very, she's a marginal character and you're forced to sort of identify with her. So it has a subversive kind of tone to it because, you know, anytime you're, you have to identify with the marginal character, the monster, you have to be critical of the of mainstream values. So I think that's what makes it different. And it's, they're very strong female characters. And you, you talk about how you <laughs> identify with that character. You've, you've yes. called yourself a freak or an outcast when you were in high school, right? Yeah, well, I, I definitely was. Like, I was very broody and reflective, but it was something that I really kept hidden. I was on the, externally, I was more of a people pleaser and I was an achiever. So it was, it was great for me to unleash this repressed aspect of myself. Unleash, I know, it's so cheesy. <laughs> um, repressed aspect of myself like so and have it witnessed and have it validated and it's really rewarding that you know so many teenagers seem to find that it resonates for them well the first film was known to be pretty campy you know and and fun yeah. this this new one which comes out you know in theaters I guess next week yeah this uh, this has got a real darker side in fact some of it it's really dark and there's there's some shocking scenes you know there's a group masturbation scene there's mm -hmm. a, you know what was it like filming all that um, well, it was just a lot of fun. Like, there's, for me, <laughs> I mean, I'll honestly, say. what could be more fun than masturbation, really? <laughs> um, Nothing. <laughs> um, it, I, I don't know. It was, it was really great to, to visit the character again. I think the reason why it's a darker film than the first one is because it's, you know, it reflects Bridget's character. She doesn't have as much fun with the, the werewolf transformation as Ginger does in the first one. And, you know, really the films are about um, repressed female desire and, you know, the, the fact that that our society is so um, critical of female desire and it's really something that teenage girls are, are taught to be fearful of. So that's what it's about. It's about the horror of, you know, being a teenage girl. Do you, do you have t teenage girls coming up to you saying, wow, you really nailed it. This is, this is who, who I am or, or this is expressing that desire to unleash who I am? I have had letters, but I don't really get recognized in the street because I look a lot different than Bridget, I think, so. And part of that is that you, you become a, were a werewolf. Right, in so this I've got film. tons so, of makeup on. So tell me about that. What was it, what's, what, how, how's it like to have all, uh, to act with all that makeup on? Um, well, it's fabulous. Like, I was always a big Star Trek fan in high school, so it's a dream come true to wear that, all that makeup. And, you know, it's like the essence of being, of being an actor is becoming the other, and you can't get much more extreme becoming the other than playing a monster. So, and, but it was really grueling. Like, it was seven hours in makeup at the final stages of the transformation. So, you know, it was made for a pretty exhausting day, but it was really validating to be able to look in the mirror and, and be ugly and have that be a good thing. <laughs> now, are you actually really into all this stuff? Like, there's a, there's a lot of self-mutilation. Yep. You cut off your ear. Yep. I mean, is that, is that is that something that you you, you are you uh, you know? Do you have a fetish for this stuff? I mean, you keep appearing in these films. I'm curious. 
Um, yeah, well, it is a very salient aspect of my psyche, I have to admit. I'm not going to go into personal <laughs> details, but, <laughs> yeah. That's part of unleashing who you are. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a thrill to have you here. The film is called Ginger Snaps Unleashed. It's the sequel. Emily Perkins, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim.